Welcome to the proof of multiplication of complex numbers in polar form. Um, I have two complex numbers. The first is r sub 1 times cosine theta sub 1 plus i sine theta sub 1. And the second complex number in polar form is r sub 2 times cosine theta sub 2 plus i times sine of theta sub 2. What we're going to do is prove that the product of those two complex numbers in polar form is equal to the product of the r values times um, the, the other part of the complex number with the angles added, cosine of theta sub 1 plus theta sub 2, and then I sine theta sub 1 plus theta sub 2. So you multiply the r values and you add the angles. So here's how the proof goes. The first thing is um, just rewriting of the initial statement. I just rewrote the two complex numbers. And then I want to reorganize a little bit. So I'm going to bring the r values to the front. I've partially written this. Um, r sub 1 times r sub 2 come to the front. And then I'm going to rewrite the part in parentheses. Cosine theta sub 1 plus i times sine of theta sub 1. And then I have cosine theta sub 2 plus i sine theta sub 2. All right. Um, I'm not doing anything for the whole rest of this proof except bringing down r sub 1 times r sub 2 because that's already the way I want it. But I am working on this product right here. And what I'm going to do is foil it. I'm going to multiply first times first, then the outers, the inners, and last times last. So I'm going to get a big, big mess here. It's cosine of theta sub 1 times cosine theta sub 2. That's first times first. Then the outers. I have i times sine of theta sub 2 times cosine of theta sub 1. And then the inners. i times sine of theta sub 1. That's from right here. Times cosine theta sub 2. <coughs> And the last times the last term in each set of parentheses gives us i squared times sine of theta sub 1 sine of theta sub 2. So great big mess there. Uh, now we're going to work on simplifying it. Again, r sub 1 times r sub 2 just come down. And I may need to do some reorganizing. I have cosine theta sub 1 times cosine theta sub 2. I'm going to bring that down. And then I want to move this term from the back end to be um, up here with the cosines. i squared is actually negative 1. So I'm going to say negative sine of theta sub 1 sine of theta sub 2. And then I'm going to group together the two middle terms that both have i in them. In fact, um, I'm going to factor the i out. And then the remainder of each term is sine of theta sub 2, cosine theta sub 1, plus sine of theta sub 1, cosine theta sub 2. 2. And that is the reorganization step. So um, we need to notice a couple of things here. All right. Cosine of one angle times cosine of another minus sine of one angle times sine of the other. That right there is cosine subtraction. So hopefully you recognize that from trig identities that you've done previously. So this thing right here is actually cosine, did I say subtraction? It's cosine addition. I hope I said cosine addition. Um, when you have the subtraction sign, it's cosine addition. So it's theta sub 1 plus theta sub 2. Okay, I apologize if I didn't, if I misspoke. This is cosine addition. 
And then over here, you have to notice you have sine of one angle, cosine of another, plus, and here's cosine of the first angle times sine of what was the second angle. I know it's a little out of order, but multiplication and addition, it really doesn't matter what the order is. So this right here is sine addition. We have sine of theta sub one plus theta sub two and I put a parenthesis there but with the I, so I guess I need to close it. I have a lot of grouping symbols here. I think basically right here, except for excessive grouping symbols, I have just completed the proof of multiplication of complex numbers in polar form because what we have right here matches what I set out to find in the rectangle up at the top. So, um, one example, this is much easier to do than to prove. Uh, I have two specific numbers in polar form, complex numbers in polar form, and I'm going to multiply them using the, the law of multiplication that we just proved. So the first thing I want to do is multiply the R values. 2 times 5 is 10. And the next thing I'm going to do is add the angles, because that's what we proved. So it's going to be cosine of, my first angle is pi over 4, and my second angle is pi over 6. So we'll get some practice um, adding fractions. And then I have i times sine of pi over 4 plus pi over 6. All right, the common denominator there is 12. So I have cosine of 3 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12. And when we have complex numbers in polar form, we just do the same thing all over again. This one's 3 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12. So really the concept is easy. It just boils down to getting some extra practice working with fractions. Um, we have cosine of 5 pi over 12 plus i sine 5 pi over 12, and that's it. That's how you multiply two complex numbers in polar form.